Hey everybody, welcome back to another lecture video. The second to last in our uh, pathway this semester. Um, so after this chapter, chapter 29, um, we're going to look at, I believe, chapter 31. You know, the immune response or immunology or something like that. Um, so we're almost done. Two more, two more lectures to go. Um, now I had mentioned in the syllabus that this would be photosynthesis only. Well, photosynthesis is one slide. <laughs> Uh, and that was when, you know, I was possibly thinking that we would run out of time. So um, it doesn't seem to be the case uh, at, the, at the rate that we're going. There's still a few weeks left. So we're going to go ahead and just look at the whole chapter. It's not going to be um, all that bad. We're going to look at the synthesis of a few biomolecules. Now, a lot of this we saw uh, the breakdown of these biomolecules um, in some earlier chapters, unless I'm confusing this class with the two others that I teach of the same subject. So um, in some class, I've gone over the breakdown of uh, lipids and uh, amino acids in addition to carbohydrates uh, to get energy. So if we didn't cover that, I apologize, but I think we, I think we did look at that. Okay, so um, I'll, I'll fill you in on any details if we need to as we go. All right, so to start off, um, what we're going to talk about here is that for a lot of the breakdown, the catabolic reactions, um, we usually have different anabolic reactions um, to build uh, structures in our bodies instead of just a reverse of those same breakdown reactions. And the reason for having different pathways that aren't simply just reverses, uh, reversals is for these two reasons. One, flexibility. Um, if the normal pathway gets blocked, we could actually reverse the degradation pathway. So it gives an alternative pathway. So you get two instead of one. Uh, it also um, helps when we have to think about equilibrium. And so right underneath this uh, number two here um, is an example. This is showing glycogen and inorganic phosphate will actually react together to form um, a hydrolyzed glycogen and free up one of those glucoses. So if we wanted to form glucose, I'm sorry, if we wanted to form glycogen like this, okay, um, we would have a problem because we have an excess of inorganic phosphate. That tends to drive this reaction the other direction, T tends to drive it towards these guys. So if we're going to try to make glycogen, we have a problem because uh, we have to overcome Le Chatelier's principle. So this is what the real reaction looks like. When we want to make glycogen, we use this pathway. And this one doesn't have inorganic phosphate in it, and so that doesn't have an effect on the equilibrium or on our ability to make that product. So multiple synthetic pathways uh, that are different and not just reversals of the, uh, the breakdown pathway. Now we're going to look at carbohydrate synthesis, lipid synthesis, and amino acid synthesis. For carbohydrates, there's a few different things. Um, we want to make glycogen, which is a polysaccharide. We also make disaccharides. And we can also make different monosaccharides other than glucose. Now for the, the differences, um, plants can actually make glucose out of carbon dioxide. We can't do that. We just get our, um, our, our carbon sources from the things we eat, from bigger molecules, and we use those carbons. So in plants, this is done uh, through photosynthesis, and that reaction is shown below. They can actually take carbon dioxide from the air, water, uh, from the roots and, and combine them together to reduce that carbon into uh, sugar to glucose. So we're unable to do this. We can make glucose, like I said, from some of the other molecules that we ingest. Um, so let's take let's take a look at that. Now, actually, we're not going to go into any more detail on photosynthesis other than right here to say the process um, by which plants are able to do this is uh, through uh, a molecule they have called a chloroplast. This chloroplast uh, is filled with tiny little uh, compartments called thylakoids, and these are akin to um, the, the, the inner matrix of the mitochondria. And so they take light and actually use that energy to transfer electrons, uh, the same way that the electron transport chain uses electrons, um, except what they're doing uh, is a little different. They're making ATP, um, for use to build up their structure, we're using, um, we're, we're also making ATP, I guess, with the mitochondria, um, except we do it with energy from our food. Plants can do it with energy from the sun. Okay. And they do that with these chlorophyll molecules that absorb 
uh, certain wavelengths of light, mainly the red wavelengths and the bluer wavelengths. Okay, how do we make glucose? We have a process called gluconeogenesis, and we can make it from a few different sources. The common ones are pyruvate, citric acid, and other uh, citric acid cycle intermediates. Sorry, citric acid cycle intermediates, not specifically citru citric acid. Um, and also some amino acids. The only thing we can't make sugar from is lipids. We have no way of taking acetyl-CoA, which is the result of lipid breakdown, um, and turning that into sugar or glucose. Um, there are a few steps that are actually reversals um, of glycolysis, uh, three reactions. Um, in order to actually get these to reverse, we have to have specific enzymes that are involved. So in glycolysis, these three reaction steps would not be reversible with the given enzymes in glycolysis. Uh, but we can do this using different enzymes in a process called gluconeogenesis. Um, so turning phosphoenolpyruvate back into pyruvate or turning fructose 6-phosphate back into fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. Uh, glucose to glucose 6-phosphate, actually these are the, the, the main directions for this one. Yeah, all of these are the, the forward directions, so we can undo all of these. So these can all be done backwards. Here you see one half of this. This is sort of showing the, the starting sources. So if we want to make glucose, uh, we can take lactate, which is forming in the lungs, right, from anaerobic processes, turn that back into glucose. We're going to look at that in a few minutes called the Cori cycle. Uh, citric acid intermediates can be used uh, to make pyruvate. These usually come from oxaloacetate. Uh, glucogenic amino acids. We'll look at some of the amino acids um, that give rise to um, some of these intermediates, like oxaloacetate or alpha-ketoglutarate, um, or can be directly made into pyruvate. Um, all of these can go right into the um, into gluconeogenesis. Now, um, oxaloacetate can be turned back into py a phosphoenolpyruvate. This is a reaction that needs its own enzyme. This is one of those uh, backward directions of the citric acid cycle. Uh, another few reactions here, getting us into fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. A normal direction is this way, so special enzyme can flip that around. And then again, normal direction is glucose to glucose 6-phosphate, but we can flip that around. So these are just some of the reactions for gluconeogenesis, just to show you some of the starting materials. So we can make our own glucose if we need to. If we weren't getting any carbohydrates and we were only eating, let's say, let's say we're not eating, we're breaking down our muscle, we can make some glucose from that. Our muscle has protein, amino acids. Uh, we will get some energy from breaking down our fats in the form of the glycerol. Um, that's part of the triglyceride. Um, that could be turned into pyruvate. But the, uh, the fatty acids themselves, we won't get ener any energy. I'm sorry, we will get energy from them but we won't get any glucose from them. All right, when we build anything, whether this is disaccharides or um, longer um, chains like, an, um, like um, glycogen, uh, it all starts the same way. We start with some glucose and we basically prep it or prime it uh, in the form of a UDP glucose. So this involves taking UTP, it's another high energy molecule, um, and hydrolyzing one of those phosphates. So triphosphate, becomes diphosphate. So this is the glucose attached to a uracil diphosphate. And so this is a ready to go um, for entering into uh, glycogenesis, making glycogen. Glucose 1-phosphate and UTP gives us our UDP glucose. And then UDP glucose just reacts with the growing glycogen chain to get one unit larger. Um, and then it hydrolyzes that UDP. This is the same if we were adding just two glucoses together to make a disaccharide or a polysaccharide of some sort uh, for uses um, we saw um, in signaling or um, attachment to proteins as, what did we call the proteins that had um, sugars on them, gangliosides or um, uh, what is that? glycosides? Okay, glycolipids, sorry, there we go. Uh, okay, the Cori cycle. We talked about glycolysis, we know what happens if oxygen isn't present, we need to regenerate NAD+, and so pyruvate gets reduced to lactate in the muscles. 
Well, the Cori cycle is responsible for taking that lactate in the muscles and taking it to the liver where it can be um, reconverted back into glucose. Because uh, we can't do anything with lactate, but we can do something with glucose, like get lots of energy from it. Um, so that's what happens. It gets transferred via the Cori cycle. Uh, then the lactate gets converted uh, back into pyruvate, back into glucose, which can then enter the bloodstream uh, and then be broken down for energy in hopes that maybe there is some oxygen this time. And if not, then it just goes back into lactate uh, and then enters the cycle again. All right, fatty acids. So we can um, make fatty acids out of the basic breakdown uh, molecules that fatty acids yield when we break them apart. So fatty acids uh, get broken down two at a time via a process called beta oxidation. The long chains, which are usually even numbered, uh, just get cleaved two at a time uh, until we get to only two carbon units called acetyl-CoA. Well, acetyl groups that end up being bound to coenzyme A as acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA is the starting uh, material for um, the, the fatty acids. And so that's what has what, what's in common between these two pathways, the catabolic and the anabolic one, is the acetyl-CoA. Now, acetyl-CoA um, is going to actually hand off the acetyl group to an ACP protein. And this, um, this acyl carrier protein, ACP, is the one that is involved in the synthesis of the fatty acids. Now we're going to look at some of the details here, but basically ACP holds these little two carbon units and then through a process of kind of like twirling around, hitting different enzymes, uh, multiple carbons are going to get added on in a repeating cycle. So let's look at that reaction. This is one of the first steps. Um, Acetyl-CoA and that ACP uh, do a transfer. So now we have acetyl-ACP. Acetyl-ACP and a synthase will react to form an acetyl-synthase. Acetyl-synthase now is going to enter into the next step in our reaction. The acetyl-synthase and a compound called malonyl-ACP. So again, ACP is, is shown in here, the acetyl carrier protein. Uh, a malonyl is a three carbon unit. Now, every time we add a malonyl, one of those carbons is gonna leave as a CO2, and we're gonna basically add two carbons. And so this is how these molecules are gonna grow by two carbons. So we went from two to four. Uh, so in step three, now there's some changing that goes on here with these reactions. We're gonna get rid of these double bonds, so we're gonna reduce them. Uh, those are going to become alcohols, if you remember what ketones reduce to. Uh, then there's a dehydration to remove that water that's going to leave a double bond. Uh, and then they need to um, reduce that, put hydrogens back on there to get saturated double bond or saturated carbons. Remember, we're making a fatty acid and they start off saturated. If we need unsaturated ones, we have enzymes that come in there and will go and, and uh, oxidize a bond. Um, so the only thing we can do is make even-numbered, saturated fatty acids. So um, these are those reduction, uh, reduction, dehydration, uh, and then uh, finally another reduction will yield uh, the four-carbon chunk that we've just been talking about as a saturated hydrocarbon. Okay, so now it's four carbons long, and we're going to start to add more carbons. So this enters into the cycle and re repeats um, with another malonyl ACP. So another CO2 gets breathed out. Uh, two more carbons get added on. Same process, condensation, reduction, hydration, uh, dehydration, reduction. Now we have hexanoil, so six carbons. We're going to usually make uh, palmitic acid. Palmitic is 16 carbons. So this process has to repeat a few more times. If we need carbons, uh, less carbons than that, then they, en they exit from the cycle early. If we need more carbons than that, then we have special enzymes that go and add two carbons at a time, let's say to get an 18 carbon stearic acid. Okay, so now we're at hexanoil, and then hexanoil will just enter into this uh, process over and over and over, each time adding another um, couple of um, carbons at a time, two at a time. Um, now there were some reductions in this reaction. The, reducting, the reducing agent um, is NADPH in this case. It's a molecule that we use for building, uh, building our body. So NAD, uh, NAD, NADH is used in me metabolism uh, as, a, as a catabolic um, oxidizer um, or reducing agent um, 
depends on if we're talking about NAD plus or NADH. Uh, but in the electron transport chain as an electron carrier, here NADPH is often used um, in the synthesis of molecules. Same, uh, same basic uh, structure, it just has a phosphate group on it. Um, membrane lipids, so uh, phospholipids. So this involves taking those fatty acids that we just made and reacting them with a glycerol 1 phosphate. So glycerol 1 phosphate is this guy uh, right here. So remember, glycerol just has OH groups on all three carbons. And then this 1 phosphate, uh, one of those OH groups has a phosphoester bond on it. And then these other two OHs can react with fatty acids to get uh, fatty acid chains on them and be a phospholipid. So, but the first step is, of course, generating the glycerol 1 phosphate. This comes from dihydroxyacetone phosphate. So this is a glycolysis product. If you remember, I think it was reaction 5 of glycolysis. Actually, um, actually it might have been reaction 4 of glycolysis. Uh, breaks um, our, our 1, 6 bis, by bis fructo, bis phospho, fructose, fructose 1, 6 bisphosphate, sorry. Gets split in half into glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate and dihydroxyacetone phosphate. So that's the source of this guy. So dihydroxyacetone phosphate can actually um, be uh, turned into glycerol. And then glycerol will react with two fatty acids. They could be the same, they can be different, um, but we will end up with uh, some ester bonds and uh, a phosphate group. So basically our phospholipid. Um, looks like it frees up some acetyl-CoA to go, and, or some just coenzyme A, sorry. Uh, to go and be, uh, participate in the citric acid cycle or, you know, wherever else it's needed. Um, to complete the process of the, uh, the phospholipid, because at the moment we're missing one other, one other group here, usually there's an amino alcohol that's added to the end, um, or a sugar, depending on where this is going, uh, and the amino alcohol is uh, serine, uh, choline, or ethanolamine. That needs to be added on for a second um, uh, phosphoester bond. Sphingolipids and glycolipids, of course, sphingolipids are made of sphingosine, which was a different backbone, um, but they uh, start off the same way. Uh, they get reacted with the two um, fatty acid chains or the one fatty acid chain in the sphingolipid um, example. Uh, and glycolipids would just have carbohydrates attached at the end. Cholesterol, if you guys don't remember what cholesterol sort of looked like. Something like that. And there's some double bonds and some, some groups in here. Um, basic skeleton of cholesterol. Um, it comes from our lipids. And so we would uh, take acetyl-CoA, two carbon groups, and start adding these guys together. Um, and so this is the first set of reactions for that. Um, three molecules of acetyl-CoA con condense to make a six-carbon molecule. Uh, and then that gets... Um, uh, catalyzes as a reduction of a thioester group. Uh, so it removes coenzyme A, freeing up this six-carbon uh, molecule, which is the primary alcohol. Then there's a few reactions where it goes uh, undergoes phosphorylation and decarboxylation, so it loses a carbon, to give a five-carbon isopentyl pyrophosphate. Now, these are the main building blocks. Um, and so you're going to see here a couple of isopentyl pyrophosphate uh, linked together. So if you link two of them together, we get this geronyl, pyrophosphate, link three of them together, C15, uh, fer fernesyl pyrophosphate, uh, and eventually these will fold over on themselves and you can link them into some rings. So this is where uh, the backbone uh, comes from for the, uh, the steroids. As far as amino acids go, or making amino acids, a lot of them can be made out of citric acid cycle intermediates, or at least the ones that we can make. We can only make 11 out of the 20. Those are the non-essentials. The essentials we have to get from our food, uh, which is why um, they're essential. They got to come in our diet. They wouldn't be essential if we could make them for ourselves. Uh, so here's an example. Um, glutamate is an amino acid that can be made out of alpha-ketoglutarate. Alpha-ketoglutarate, citric acid cycle intermediate. Uh, we can transaminase this. So uh, 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 nitrogen can be transferred onto this, com this compound, transamination. There's an enzyme that would do this, uh, and that would make glutamate. Glutamate's an amino acid. 
uh, in addition to some intermediates that can be directly turned into uh, amino acids, um, some of them can be intermediates uh, in turn. So glutamate, which was an amino acid, uh, can also become other amino acids or, or assist in their creation. So here's a pyruvate and a glutamate. Uh, pyruvate can actually get that nitrogen that glutamate just got when it was you know, in a previous reaction uh, and become alanine. So pyruvate can become alanine and glutamate just goes back to being alpha ketoglutarate, which can then again take another nitrogen and make another glutamate or make another alanine. Um, so here's a table that kind of shows how they all kind of fit in. So um, from pyruvate, you can see we can make quite a few different amino acids. Um, there's a few intermediates. Uh, phosphoenyl pyruvate can be turned into a few. Um, malate can be uh, turned into aspartate which is an amino acid. Oxaloacetate can then be turned into aspartate um, through a transamination. Uh, aspartate can go on to make a few others, uh, and so on. So these, again, uh, are the 11 amino acids. Now, there's two kinds of amino acids. There's the glucogenic, the ones that can actually be used to make glucose. Um, and those are going to be anything that enters into the citric acid cycle uh, or um, can be turned into pyruvate. And then there's the amino acids that we would call um, ketogenic. These are the ones that um, derive from acetyl-CoA uh, or fats, and these cannot be turned into um, cannot be turned into glucose, uh, but they can be turned into ketone bodies. So um, uh, acetone or um, acetyl acetyl-CoA. Uh, um, these guys, uh, if you are on a keto a ketone diet or the, the ketose diet. Uh, you don't um, eat a lot of carbs, and so you start to break down a lot of your fats. And what happens is uh, you end up having an excess of acetyl-CoA uh, because you're missing some carbohydrates. Uh, your citric acid cycle is not able to handle all of it, and the acetyl-CoA builds up as ketone bodies. And so uh, this could lead to a condition called acidosis, which is not good, um, but it also leads to um, you know acetone and other ketones building up and what can give people uh, some, you know, weird smelling breath, if you ever notice that in someone who's on the ketose diet or the ketone diet. Uh, okay, so that is the metabolic pathway um, for amino acids. I guess that's the end of the chapter. So um, we will be doing one more uh, video lecture after this and then having our final exam. If you guys have questions, definitely send me an email. Uh, or, or post something in the discussion boards, but I uh, hope you guys are staying healthy out there, and I will see you next time.